Hi there, and welcome to a special presentation on fabric choices for our upcoming Quilt Along Vintage Blues. I hope you enjoy the presentation and find it really helpful. Although if you still have questions, please feel free to uh, tag me in a post, send me a message, and just let me know uh, what you're thinking. And if you're having any uh, troubles at all picking your fabrics, this video, uh, once I'm done talking here, is about an hour and 10 minutes long. So uh, get comfortable and uh, grab a tea and put your feet up and enjoy. So record right now, one sec. So now that we're recording, you have to behave yourselves. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Always. I'm muting myself. That's that's <laughs> fine. We don't want to get splish, splish splash. Somebody's taking a bath right now. So it's so dangerous. Hi, Betty. I have to oh. mute myself as well. Yeah, you guys, if, if it gets noisy and there's a lot of background noise from other people, I will probably just mute you guys. But um, we're all grown ups here and I think we can manage our noise level in the background and be responsible with that. So if the phone starts to ring or the dog starts to bark, my dog's upstairs. But if anything else uh, catastrophic happens, you can just mute yourself. Otherwise, I will do it for you. Um, thanks for joining our chat about uh, vintage blues. Uh, most of you, I recognize the names, but there's a couple that I don't. So I don't want to assume that everybody knows what this project is and what's going on. So I'll just give a brief introduction here. Um, and I'm going to share my screen so you can see a picture of it as we're talking about it. There we go. Can everybody see this picture of this quilt? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So Vintage Blues is a quilt along that we are starting at the beginning of May. And we're going to complete this quilt over uh, four months. And we are going to do eight steps to complete it. The steps will be posted on the 1st and the 15th of every month. So starting on May 1st, then May 15th then what comes after May, June 1st and 15th and so on until we finish the quilt at the end of August so that we're ready to roll for a new September mystery. Um, typically the quilt alongs that we do are mysteries, but I usually give a sneak peek for everybody to see what the quilt's gonna look like for the control freaks out there. Um, I'm pointing at you. Uh, for those of you who need that, um, there's usually that sneak peek option, but this time I just decided I wanted everybody to make this quilt. I wanted people to be excited about it and uh, uh, take a look at it ahead of time. So I forced it upon you. It is not a mystery. We get to look at it ahead of time. Um, and this is something a little bit different that I haven't normally done in the past is we've opened up the fabric selection chat to anybody who wants to come in and take a look because there may be people here um, in this meeting that have no idea what the militia is. Uh, maybe you've never heard about it, uh, never even seen anything happen with me before. So um, it's, a, it's an opportunity for you to ask some questions and kind of get to know how the process works um, as far as how, how I do stuff, how these things work in our group. So we are a subscription-based group and you have the option to renew annually. And there are several quilt alongs, some mysteries, some aren't, and lots of video tutorials, lots of other fun things that members get first access and dibs to uh, and discounts on like retreats and uh, satellite mysteries and other special events that are over and above the group activities. So if you're already a member, this project is included in your fee. You don't have to pay any extra for it, but if you are not a member and you're interested in joining, it's $40 Canadian once a year and it starts on the day that you join. So it's not a January and then we have to prorate something. It starts if you join today, then uh, your membership starts today and expires one year from today. And everything, and I can show you guys um, at the end of this call, we can do a little tour through the website just to kind of show you what kind of stuff you get with the membership. So if you're thinking, what am I getting for this 40 bucks? If it's just one quilt, it's not. It is so, so, so much more. So um, the size of our quilt, let's talk about vintage blues. The size of our quilt is 89 by 89. So it's a nice big queen. It would look fantastic on a wall, um, but great on a great size for a bed too. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a few different colorings of this quilt. 
so that you can just kind of see uh, get some ideas. I've already put some combinations together. Um, and then we'll go into the playing with different color combinations. You guys can shout out colors. Uh, tell me what you're thinking for a palette for yourself and you just want to get a visual. I can do that for oh, you. So um, this is my original coloring that I did up in EQ. I have not made this quilt yet. I'm going to be making it right along with you guys a couple of steps ahead so that I can make sure that the pattern uh, reads and uh, you can assemble it properly as per instructions. So this is the original coloring. I intended it to be more of a classic look. I've done some more modern, more, some more contemporary quilts as of late. And my roots, my love, my, my soul is in the, the vintage and reproduction style quilts. And so I thought I need to go back to that because I felt like I was veering a little bit too far off, far off the path, which is kind of fun because you know, as a quilter, you kind of change and evolve over the years. So I've been embracing that, but I really wanted to get back to what I truly loved about these kinds of quilts they are classic and timeless and just so, so beautiful um, to make. So for those of us who love these kinds of quilts, just right up your alley. There are three blocks in this quilt uh, that are typically traditional quilt blocks. And one of them, two of them, I've never done before. I've never done anything with a storm at sea block. So right here in the middle of this quilt, just to give you an idea of scale, this section here in the center is gonna be a big 20 inch storm at sea block. And then the remainder of the blocks that we're going to put around this are going to be in 10 inch uh, sizes. So uh, the math is going to be super easy to, to deal with. So I took the, um, see this little unit here, these, these little kind of corners right there and right there, there's eight of those in the quilt. Those are storm at sea elements. Literally, it is a diamond here, a corner unit here that is not pieced or colored the same as this one. As you can see, there's no dark blue. It's just a square. So I've changed that detail yeah. and one more diamond going this way. So we have a little L shape. So that's still an element of the Storm at Sea block. Then we've added, uh, oh, sorry. And the diamonds from the Storm at Sea make up our two, our first inner border of diamonds, our ring of diamonds and then our last border ring of, of, of diamonds. So taking the elements out of the Storm at Sea block and spreading them out throughout the quilt so that we can enjoy them in different ways. And then the traditional log cabin block, it's always nice to frame things. And I really liked how when I set these log cabin blocks that the little corner, hopefully you guys can see my little cursor moving, um, the little corner of this square and a square and a square unit here kind of peeks out perfectly um, alongside those log cabin uh, blocks. So it, it, it's not interrupted. We've got a nice step going all the way around the quilt. I love how that, uh, that just happened uh, when I placed those blocks in that way, I like it. Um, and then we have these, which have several different names. I've heard Delectable Mountain or Mountain. Um, the, um, they are definitely a more traditional looking block. And um, in the EQ drawing, you'll see that there are some seams in here, but we're not going to have that many seams in this section here. I'm going to get rid of those seams and piece this as long strips. And I'll show you what I mean once we get into the EQ. But you can just see a bit of a faint line there on some of them. So that's why I thought I would just bring that up. Um, and then we've got a lovely floating border here that just frames everything really nicely. Um, so 89 by 89, this little outside guy right here, that is not an additional border uh, in the EQ drawing. That is a quarter of an inch space. And I put a binding color there um, just to show you what it looked like, look like bound. Uh, it's not an actual another border on the quilt. It's just binding showing there. And then we have a few half square triangles in here to just um, fill in the spaces in the corners of those. So there's our quilt. I'm going to show you what I pulled for fabrics because um, there's quite a bit of fabric required for the background for this. There's six meters needed for the background uh, and I'll share the fa fabric requirements with you guys so that you know what you're looking at um, and and six meters is a lot. So um, but it is a big quilt 
with, with a fair amount of piecing, and we know that big quilts with fair amount of piecing, it's more fabric. That fabric gets eaten up in the seam allowances. So it's six meters, and I've done the math, I've checked it all. It definitely needs that six meters. Well, let's say it, it definitely needs five and a half. So if you have five and a half of something or can five, five and a half of something, and you don't make any mistakes, then go right ahead. But I've, I've put it at six just to bump up for, do you want to pre-wash and you get a little bit of shrinkage? Um, did you make a boo-boo here and there? Uh, which is bound to happen, especially if you don't plan on making any mistakes, that's when the mistake's going to happen. So six meters is nice and safe. I, I take the, the amount once I figured out all of the patches that it requires to make the quilt and I bump it up by 20%. So that gives you that kind of nice cushion. Whereas if you use a little bit more than your five and a half that's actually required, then you have that as a buffer. But if you don't end up using it, guess what? You have a half meter um, or a fat quarter, a slightly more or less that you can put it back into your stash and use for something else. So um, I like to be generous with the fabric requirements for that reason. But if you wanted to make this background scrappy and you did not want to go out and buy six meters of one fabric, you can totally do that because you can do six one meter cuts. So now you have an increased amount of variety in your background fabric because you can choose six fabrics. If you don't have one meter cuts, you can do 12 half meter cuts. Okay, you see where I'm going with this? You can go 24 fat quarters if you want. So if you have lots of fabric, but not yardage and don't want to go and buy six meters of yardage, you don't have to, to be able to participate in the project. Totally up to you. Um, I'm doing that for mine, but um, I, I do also like a scrappy look. So when we do get into um, talking about the fabrics that I chose, um, you'll see that the particular fabric that I chose for mine gives a little bit of an illusion of a scrappy background. So this, there's a trick that you can, can do there. And then we have three different blues. So your background and then three different blues. We've got a light blue and sorry, we'll look at the lag, lag. Actually, let's look at the storm at sea texture section in here. I'll make this a bit bigger just in case you're looking on a small screen and can't see that. Um, let's look at the storm at sea block here. We have a dark blue, which is in the um, center square and the outer squares. And then we have a medium blue, which is the square and a square framing in the center and then a light blue, which is in these diamonds. So the dark, medium, and light blue are sprinkled throughout the rest of the quilt in different places. And it's around two meters, some a, one a little bit more and the other two a little bit less of each of them, which I'll share the exact numbers with you at the end. Um, but you don't have to, um, you don't have to choose all blues. You could choose something else if you wanted. The idea is to have a bit of a value difference with the light, medium, and dark. So whatever color palette you pick, as long as you go with a lighter color of one of the, that color, a medium of it, and a dark of it, you'll still get a really nice um, dynamic overall effect like you see here. So um, the first thing I wanna show you before I show you my picks is um, I changed uh, the background fabric in here to be something a little bit busier to give you an idea of what it might look like as a blended quilt. So blended meaning mm -hmm. if you put busy fabrics beside busy fabrics or close to the same value, value meaning light the, on the scale of light to dark, and those two fabrics are really close together on that scale, then um, you'll get what's called a blended effect where you can sometimes see like, right, I'll zoom in here. Uh, come on, make it a little bit bigger. So you can see there is a diamond here, but then on the sides where the light fabric is, you can see that there's part of that big scale print that's in that background fabric that's touching this diamond. So this edge of the diamond is a little blurry in comparison to some of the other spots where the fabric just happens to be really light in that area where it meets it and you see a more crisp or clean line. So that's what a blended effect means. And if you love that, by all means, you do not have to choose the fabrics that I chose or the same values that I chose. Um, you can definitely mix that up. And if that look doesn't appeal to you at all, then right back to a more clean, crisp, dynamic uh, look. 
when you have that high contrast and it's not blended, you really see all the design elements. If you want to start a pop out in your quilt, you need to make sure that your background fabrics um, are of enough of a value contrast to your star fabric so that that element pops out. And in this case, the same thing. So depending on how much you want it to pop out or if you want it to be a softer, more blended feel, you can adjust your, your fabric requirements or your fabric choices based on your preferences. Just gonna have a quick sip of water. Thank you. All right, so this is what I've chosen for mine. It's gonna be a little bit more of an icy blue. Um, and right now you can't really totally see. These are the, the pictures of the exact fabric that I'm using in my quilt. And I'll show you what they look up like up close afterwards you can't see what it looks like right now because I mean, you're looking at a bird's eye view of this because it's a small picture. So um, it's a little bit more icy, a little bit more teal into it, more of a tealy blue, um, but there is still some creaminess in it. So it's not, it looks like it's a really cool palette, but the background fabric actually has a little bit of cream in it. So it makes it a little bit warmer, but this is going to be my palette uh, that I'm going to choose for this quilt. And I've got the fabrics and I'll show you these specific fabrics but I clicked buy now on the button from Willow Creek Quilts and So Charming Crafts um, for all of the fabric for this quilt including the backing so I am good to go as soon as that stuff arrives. All right so here's just another look for those of you who might want to see something a little bit more um, rustic looking. I think that's probably the best word. It's just a combination of different browns. And I'll zoom in on that. So we've got a print in here as our medium. So we have a dark, dark brown, and then we have our light brown, which is kind of like a caramely tan in here. But the medium, I've chosen a brown floral print just for interest because the other two fabrics really appear as a tone on tone and it may even look like a solid to you in this picture but if you go with all solids you have a little bit less interest in the quilt so if you want to um, go with sewn on tones uh, mm -hmm. or solids adding a print into one of those uh, positions will definitely add a little bit more interest in the quilt just like you see in this one so if you like a more rustic palette or a country kind of look this would be perfect for that. And you know how it totally changes the look of the quilt. It doesn't look as vintage anymore. It looks more rustic. So the fabric choice is totally changed. And I, it's funny because I hear people say, well, I, I don't particularly like that pattern. I don't like that pattern. But what I'm, what I really know what's going on is there as I don't like the fabrics that are in that quilt. Because as soon as you see a pattern in a collection of fabrics that you like, all of a sudden you're drawn to it more. So mm -hmm. It's not so much about the pattern. I almost feel like it doesn't matter what the pattern is. If you're using fabrics that you love, you're going to love that quilt. So, all right, what do we have next here? So here's one that is really, really cool because I've done it in a, um, uh, a collection of grays. And so the background is a very light, soft gray. And then we have a our first light gray and then a medium gray and then the dark charcoal, almost black in there uh, that completely changes the look of the quilt. And although I had vintage traditional in mind when I designed this, uh, came up with this design in the first place, now it almost looks a little bit more edging towards the modern. So you can see how the fabrics totally change, um, change what your, your overall effect is gonna be. So if you've got something more masculine in mind uh, or something a little bit more on the modern side, this would be a great color palette for you. This is not my bag, this is not my jam, but if it is yours, here you go. It's a little bit more fresh, uh, crisp feeling. Uh, I chose a dark brown a for the dark and a teal for the medium and a peach for the, for the light. And then just kind of a creamy light, soft light for the background fabric. And um, it, it is pretty, but it almost feels a little bit Southwestern to me, if that maybe if that makes sense. So it totally changed the look of the quilt again. Now it doesn't look like a vintage style quilt anymore. Now it looks something that, that you might um, make for your Arizona home, you know, kind of thing. So totally different palette there. Again, not my thing, but you know, everybody's gonna make something that they love. 
Back to a more vintage look, um, I decided to put reds together and just to see what it looks like with three values of reds. And as you can see, when I talked about um, using one of the prints, uh, making one of those prints a uh, more busy print instead of tone on tones, you can see it and I've got it in a different position in this quilt so that you can see uh, what it would look like in a different spot because this fabric now then is out in these diamonds. So the diamonds in this row here are the darkest fabric and the lightest color. I should say darkest color and lightest color, not light as in background, but lightest color. So that light one here that my cursor is over, this one right here, that's our lightest red. Okay, so these rows of diamonds, these chains of diamonds that go in these inner and outer borders are the lightest color and the darkest color. So if you want to alternate one of those using a print so that you have nice amount of interest through here, make one of those a print that is a little bit busier or maybe a little bit more large scale. So you see some interest out here, not just have it appear as a solid or tone on tone chain. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. To, you know, and, and like I said, this is a different position for that print in here, but you can see how much more life it gives it rather than just having a solid red. It would almost be like need to be like a pinky red to be light enough to pass off as a light red in there, but um, really makes a difference. And, and in this one, the background fabric is a little bit busier. Um, it's like a, a light shirting with a little red speckled print on it, so. And then I have, uh, I, I tweaked that palette just a little bit and I went with like a really warm, larger scale red and cream print for the background. And I actually did put like kind of a dusty peachy pink in there with the red and I super love it. I super love how it totally warmed everything up, totally changed the feeling of the quilt. Um, if you agree, like I, I think that it just like that warmth in here, this peachy really yep. totally changed it um, and having a, a different warm background in there. So uh, a little bit more of a blended look because it's a larger scale background print. So if you like that look with a blended, uh, blended fabric, then you can get away with it. And a, and, a, and a side note about using a blended print for a background fabric, and maybe you found a gorgeous print. And, and I think we were looking at one the other day that had cream in the background, but it had like leaves and birds and other little things in it, like the teals and browns in it. Um, so, I mean, it, overall, it looked like maybe a medium value fabric, but there was parts of it that were lighter and parts of it that were a little bit darker. If you want to use a fabric like that for a background and you don't super love a blended look, make sure that the colors that you pick the values of the colors that you pick are even darker than what I show in my original example. So you're the darkest red that you can find or the darkest blue or as far as the if the gray, if the gray is the palette that go with black for the darkest one and then move up uh, a little bit lighter for a gray and a little bit lighter yet for another gray. So just don't make your lightest color too close to that background and you'll still have a blended look slightly but you'll still get the dynamic overall effect of the pattern. The diamonds will pop out, the mountains will pop out, um, and the log cabin uh, logs will, will pop out as long as you just adjust the, the temperatures, I guess, of those, not temperatures, the value of the, um, of the colors. I hope that makes sense the way I explained it. If it doesn't, you can ask and say, that didn't make sense. <laughs> All right, wow. so this, yeah, so this is our um, cool quilt with the gray palette, the gray and charcoal palette. But all I've done here is taken a reverse value position. So instead of a light background, we have a dark background. So completely changed the whole look of it. And again, it still looks more like a modern quilt than a traditional quilt, even though the blocks and the medallion style layout are more, uh, lean towards traditional. So it's just a complete value reversal. My lightest background fabric is now a very dark. My lightest color is now a dark color. My medium stayed in the same position and the dark became a light. 
if that makes sense to you. So it's just, and what I'm gonna do before we start this is right now on the website, um, if you're a member, you have access to this, the fabric requirements and a coloring sheet are already up there. And so what I'm gonna add to that is fabric one, two, and three, which will be your, in this case, your lightest gray, medium gray, and dark gray, um, and, and put those positions down so that you can visualize or you can color on it and go, okay, this is where the dark one goes, this is where the light one goes. And if you have one of those coloring apps, you can import the picture and then you can just touch on the screen to recolor your quilt so you can get an idea of what it would look like with the values of those fabrics in those positions. So a really, really cool, if you're looking for a gift uh, for, for a guy or a couple, I find that, I mean, as a long arm quilter, we see a lot of people bringing quilts in that are for wedding gifts um, or new home gifts uh, for couples, engagement gift or whatever. And they want to have something that's still nice and the and and pretty, but a little bit more neutral, so that both parties like them, both partners like them. So um, this is a, this would be a great example of something that you could do that would be a little bit more neutral. And then I threw the brown and teal and peach back into um, the black background just for fun. I don't like this. I'm definitely not making it. It's not on my list. Um, but just an idea to show you, and it kind of kind of looks like that Aztec Southwestern kind of look again. If you love that look, black background with those fresher colors in there um, could to can totally change it. So, and that's the purpose of this part of the presentation is just so that you can kind of open up your mind a little bit to seeing the design, seeing the pattern in totally different colorways to go, okay, maybe there's something there that I like and I want to chase that rabbit. Um, and see where that goes as far as pulling different fabrics to go with it kind of thing. So, all right, so now I'm going to bring up, actually I should just say, does anybody have any questions so far? It looks great. If, you're, if you're speaking and you're muted, I can't hear you. <laughs> but any questions at all? No, nope, we're good. All right, so we'll carry on. So now we're going to go in and look at the actual quilt in my EQ software. And I'll share my screen with you again. Everybody can see that. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. <clears throat> so this is where we can play a little bit with what you guys want to see. If you have a palette kind of tumbling around in your brain that you kind of want to visualize and want to see an audition of that. I have a huge selection of fabrics here that we, and colors that we can plop in there and see. So if you want to pipe up and uh, suggest or ask to see something, you'll have to unmute yourself because when we're screen sharing, I can only see a little bar of you across the side. So I can't see if anybody's got their hand up um, mm -hmm. at all. So anyone. Can you do anything in purples? Purples. I love purple. <laughs> I know. Sure. So <laughs> let's put um, like a dark purple as our dark. And then let's see what this one looks like as a medium. So there's our, that's probably too light as a medium. So let's pick this one. And that might not be enough contrast for you, but we can, we can adjust that. So that feels like a good step. And see right here how your um, your diamonds are now your darkest color and your lightest color. And that keeps that contrast nice there. I love that. Otherwise those diamonds don't pop out as much. I definitely would change the background fabric with this yeah. though. And this happens to be here, the fabric that I'm using in mine, which could actually work for this. And I'll, I'll show you a, clo a closer up look of what my fabrics look like afterwards. But, um, but yeah, it, the purple feels like it needs a cool kind of background to me. Um, however, I have made a quilt before that was um, blues and purples and browns and creams. So let's just... Explore. How about a dark purple background? Oh, a dark purple background? Yeah. yeah. 
let me go back to this. And if we do a dark purple background here, then what we need to do is change the dark purple in the pattern to a light. Oops, that changed too much. It changed too much. Let's see if I can it get that. It gives a effect though, doesn't it? Yeah. So this one right in here, I'd have to change to a light, but it's not letting me select that. Um, I'm going to just try to do something here. Sharon, what's the minimum color allotment for this? Like, do we need three colors? Like, obviously, if you're doing scrappy, it's going to be a lot more, but a bare minimum, how many colors? Well, bare minimum is one color. <laughs> Right, color. one color in a background, <laughs> right? Because it, the, like, yeah. if you think about the original palette, it's a blue and a background. Right. It's just three values of blue, <laughs> right? If you want right. to do it completely and totally every color scrappy, sky's the limit. You could add as much as you want. Right. <clears throat> I have a, I have a plan. I think. Okay, I am trying my very best. <laughs> to get this one color light in there and it's not cooperating with me, sorry? What if you put a white where the light purple is on that dark background and then the light in the medium? Okay, so a light is a background? No, nope, no, nope. that, that dark purple is the background. Yeah. And white, light, white where the light purple is and then the light purple where the medium is. Oh, that's nice. Ah, <clears throat> that's really nice. So yeah. what's like happening here is now you can see that this this second color in here disappears. It has disappeared. And it's not bad. If you squint at this, I still like that look. But if you wanted to do this with half the work for the borders, you would just put a rectangle here instead of piecing another diamond all the same color, right? You would just put a rectangle here and space out those diamonds to have that that look. That's cool. We've lost the color. Mm -hmm. That is cool. That is cool. And I never thought, and this is why I love doing stuff like this is because you guys have great ideas. So yeah, you could totally do that. And no half square triangles in the corners and not piece these little guys. Everything just appears to float on top of exactly, yeah. this dark purple background. So whoever requested that, that, that was, that's a cool idea. All right. Who else wants to see a, I'm going to just back up a little bit because sometimes when I change too many things, it doesn't want to cooperate with me going forward. So who has another color combination they want to try? Sharon, could mm -hmm. you change the lighter background to one more of a coffee kind of look? Yeah. So warm uh, it up a little bit. Yeah, because I've got big dogs and I want to make this for the motorhome, I need a darker background. Yeah, so something like this maybe? Um, no more coffee with blue. Like I want to stay in the blues blues because that's the color in our motorhome. But not blending. Not, not a big print. Okay, let's just see. Um, somewhere of a well like a coffee like how much cream in your coffee <laughs> uh, uh, not what you much what about and, that and a blue no and a blue background i have a no viney print i'm thinking of using so it's okay. a coffee background with blue vines in it okay so can you visualize oh, the blue vines yes Yes, that might work. Just I mean, I could go in here and, and see what I could find in my blue category here. But I mean, we could be looking for, I think what we need Beige. to look is yeah. at the cream Beige. and then yeah. find something with a blue tick in it. Um, and we don't want to go into the, so that's kind of a grayish blue. No. That I wish you were of... selling some of these fabrics that you're showing here. <laughs> <laughs> and this one might work as well. So let's just take a quick look at those ones and see. Uh, this is going to lighten it up a little bit. And this one's going to make it even warmer. 
but that's got a blue and brown fleck in that. Right. Now, what about if we reverse, we put the beige where the lightest blue is, uh -huh. put a dark background on it. So if we put, um, which beige, this one? Um, no, the lightest beige where the lightest blue is and change the background to like a navy or a denim. Oh, that's pretty. These, this, this print right here gets lost. So I would say we would need to adjust that, but that so would be tighter. easily done. It's nice. Hmm. I'm trying to avoid that lightest cream. Yeah, I know I have a big black dog and two black cats. I understand, hence the black. <laughs> right. Because when we travel, where do the two dogs want to lie? Right in the middle of the bed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that gives you some good ideas. It does. Hmm. Just by switching. That's nice too. That's really pretty. So I just. I could see that middle getting right? real dirty real fast. It's, it's, um, this dark blue is almost too close to the blue background. So I just, um, yeah. lightened it up a bit. Yeah. I like that one. It makes the center medallion pop so much mm -hmm. more. Yeah. Yeah. The one with the, the light, the one just before this one. That one? Yeah, that one. That mm -hmm. looks great. That is so cool. Right? Like mm -hmm. your background, just because you choose the dark background doesn't mean it has to be black or dark gray. Dark blue, right? Like, or dark brown, right? What if what if we went with the dark brown background? That is a nasty look right there. I do not like yeah. that. <laughs> However, let's uh let's see about this brown. That's kind of the tone I'm looking for. So if we go back to these, let's see what happens. Mm. Mm. It's meh. Yeah. No. It's meh. Well, if you were looking for a soft looking quilt and the design gets lost in that one. Mm -hmm. Lots to think about. Yeah. I was going to say now I have no idea what to use. Oh, I like this one. Mm. <laughs> Like now one. we have too many options mm -hmm, right too many is not so good mm -hmm. but you not to rush you but can we see your fabrics i can't see yes. much longer yes okay that's not hard <laughs> at all so let me and he, here's the the struggle is real because um shopping online oh my goodness trying to shop online for fabric for something and you know fabric's always different Mm -hmm. right the fabric is always different in real life and i have to say um can you guys see my screen you now yes yes it, this was my oh, this was it. my chaos this was my fabric pull so right here on my screen this is my light and you know how i was talking about a scrappy background yeah this is my light because it, look at all the different textures and interest in there. So, so wherever that's cut, it's going to look like I've used a, a different a, a number of different cream prints. So this one here is from Willow Creek Quilts, and um, it was brand brand new. Um, and I don't know how much Haley has left. I think she's on this call. Um, but there is another color of this as well she had one that was in a warmer print so that the the lightest part of it kind of looked like this tone in here uh, so i think she's got this in a couple different colors so she got some other great lights in there too so this one's from willow creek this one is my light blue and that's from willow creek as well this is my medium blue that's from willow creek and this one over here i had to splice in a photo from so charming crafts in saskatoon that's my um my dark my binding is going to be this one though mm -hmm. that's a beautiful piece of fabric it, what is it the is. backing 
My backing is, I'll have to show it to you. I just ordered it last night. Um, you are going to be super surprised at this. Um, I was wondering if I had your backing. <laughs> no, no, because I literally just ordered it last night. Okay. So, um, so um, I have an idea too, because I just got fabric from So Charming Crafts as well. Uh -huh. um, I don't know. Can you see my video, Sharon? Uh, hang on a sec. I have to find you because I have a little bar. Of is that Joey? That is Joey. Yeah. That's what I thought. There you are. Um, yes. B. Yeah, I can see yours. So could I get like just, just change, a white and then mix them? Change the places of your red and blue. And then you have your gradation from the tan is your light color. The red yeah. is your medium color and the dark blue is your dark color. Would that work? Mm-hmm. Yes, I have to order more fabric. <gasps> Such a terrible thing. <laughs> I'll have to order more of this one, I think. So um, let's see. Can we see it? Yeah, hang on. Okay, so this is my backing. <gasps> oh, 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 I love, oh, that's I love cool. that. That is super that's cool. Really cool. Yeah. Now, Sharon, how would that look like as a background? Uh, let's see. So um, for those of you who don't know, you can do this. You can save this image uh, as a city background. Save that image in here. That's what I love about electric quilt. Uh, and I can go libraries, fabric library, and I can say import from image files, which means my image files on my computer. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the picture there that I just saved. You guys can see all this, right? Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. I was hoping that I wasn't, because well, sometimes when I do a different screen, uh, I have to do a new screen share. So I was hoping I wasn't talking ahead and you guys couldn't see it. So it's going to import that, we're just, that fabric. We're just seeing the image, uh, the city lights image from the shopping. We're not seeing EQ. Ah, okay. That's what I wanted to know is, yes, the, so basically I saved that image, but you can see the scale of it is different, mm -hmm. but the I color specs are gonna be close to the same. Um, so we'll just, we'll put that, put that in here. Here's that fabric now. It looks very liney and graphic -y in this. <laughs> Uh, picture, but if I look up close, you'll be able to see more of the texture. We can't see well, it. Well, no, yeah, can you put it in the quilt for us? Oh, I did. Hang on, new share. No, you're you you're, you need to change your window. I did. There, there we go. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's mm -hmm. good. That's better. So when I zoom I like out, that. it looks kind of weird. Yeah. Oh. When I zoom yeah. in, no. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. it is busy, but remember this light right here? That yeah, wasn't my original palette. Right. So let me change it so back to my original palette and then we can look at it again. Ooh, that Ooh. works for me. Ooh. So I got to so change one of those colors in there, but. Hmm. Um, yeah, if you just changed it around, it's not bad. Yeah. Oh, wow. dang it. It's just doing that thing again where it's changing more than one color. But you get the idea, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I like yeah. it. It looks really, really busy from um, further oh, out. Wow. But when we scroll in, you can really see that fabric in there. It looks right. like newspaper. Mm -hmm. I love it. Is. And it still works. Now, uh, something else to note here, too. How EQ brings a picture into... Um, into the space inside this workable, this work table is all oriented and positioned the same. So it looks like each piece of fabric is all connected, right? Like, so this is a square here and that's all one piece of fabric, but this right here is the corner of the log cabin, but it still looks like it's a continuous piece of fabric. That's not going to happen in real life because you're going to cut yeah. those sections, right? right? So it's a little bit deceiving there. So it will be more broken. It won't look like a cityscape when you piece it into the quilt. It'll look okay. like just little flecks of color, flecks of blue and brown. So just so you mm -hmm. aren't getting too excited with, ooh, it looks like one continuous city background. It, it won't when you piece it into your quilt. So, yeah. Any other uh, requests or ideas? 
just going to back up a little bit. I was thinking about oh. using the French general blues oh. and blues and reds. Yeah, so they have um, kind of a little bit more of a refined classy look, right? Yes. Like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, like that's that kind of thing. You know, if you changed your and this is one of the quilt, that's the background fabric I used in one of the quilts at the very beginning where I showed the different colorways to give an example of the blues with a blended background. Okay. So it still, oops, it still works. But you I think wanted, now, Sharon, if you were to use that flower, you just had back there, is it too big? This particular background print? And not the one that had the flowers there, the French general that you were showing? Well, this one isn't technically French general, but it would okay, be similar to that kind that, of look. Too big? Mm. Would it, is it too big? Yeah. Um, not necessarily, no. And that's going to be a personal choice because when we look at this screen right now, this was the same um, background fabric that I used in an example discussion, discussing it earlier. When we look at um, a fabric like this one right here, that's right beside it, this line looks nice and crisp, but this area where that print is, is not as crisp. That's what gives the blended mm -hmm. feel. So you would want to darken up some of those main color fabrics to compensate for that so that the dynamic element of the quilt still comes out. So if we were to just change that to a darker blue, and this might not be the right blue, so bear with me, but if we change that to a darker blue, don't look at the color, just look at the contrast right here. Yeah. Now you can see the contrast difference. Okay. So it'll be a matter of changing that, um, the value. So you're getting the right value or going with a completely different color, because um, even if it's close to the same value, if it's a different color, it will make a difference. So I'm just trying to find a blue that well, kind of- Was it Patty that was asking? She was saying about the red. What if you put the red in with the blue? Right, the French general red. Yeah. And I don't think I would use that as the background, the, 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 the big print. I might use that as the light blue. And then a okay. and then a French general red as the dark, and um, maybe just a small small print red. Ooh, yeah. Oh, I like the red. A small print red, like a shirting in the background. Yes, yes, like that. Very cool. So yeah, and different colors will work as well, right? Like Jody's Jody's palette. Um, she's looking at a rust and wow. a burgundy and a dark dark navy blue together to show it to us after. right so her rust would be kind of like this I'm more confused now. I'm never, yeah. uh dark dark navy blue would be here and then uh the red would be kind of like this one so jody's would look more like this and then depending on i would change that background to something a little bit more warm like that or even something more blendy i love that but what if I used the red as the background and just did the, the rusty color and the blue? That'll be one powerful quilt. <laughs> okay. With a you red background. Match your personality. So let's just change the places between the red and the light and take a look at it. It oh, is gosh, no, hate it. It's a little too overwhelming. Yeah. yeah. It's still a little bit too powerhouse. Actually, Sharon, those fabrics came from So Charming too, so it yep. would be easy to, to uh, download those pictures and put them in it. Well. Exactly. Yep. Totally. But this gives you kind of a, that's kind of the tones that you have mm -hmm. there. It gives you a, a kind of a, a, a visual. And that's got a red kind of a shirting background. I'm going to zoom right in so you can get a better look right there. You can see that's kind of a busier background, but if you change that to something a little bit softer and more creamy, mm. it's a little bit more dynamic now. It's not as blendy, maybe a little bit more striking. Um, this would be a beautiful background as well. Just a tone on tone would be really nice. <laughs> I love that fabric. Too many choices. Yeah, I know. Right. Oh, How much fun? Like How much if fun? Anyone else? The final love. 
If you love the fabric, you'll love the quilt. That's that's can right. We, can we come back to you after we find the fabric that we think we like and let you know? Yes, absolutely. So um, how we do it inside the group is um, once you, and I'm there, like for those of you, or if there are any of you here that aren't group members um, and haven't seen what goes on, um, I'm there commenting and posting and um, chatting right alongside with you. So if you post something, which we encourage you to do because everybody else wants to see your fabric too, right? So post your stuff and say, what are you thinking? And if you don't feel like posting it, send it to me in a private message. That's totally fine too. And I can give you some feedback, but other people might learn from the feedback that you receive when you post it in the, in the main group. So it is a good idea to post it in there because you might get somebody that, oh, I absolutely love that. And the next person, well, what if you change this? And, and there's people that comment on those posts besides me that sometimes turn the, look at it from a different angle and say, well, what if you switched out this one with a that? And, oh, I never thought of that, you know? Like, so it's the, the more minds, creative minds we have to bounce things off of, the better. So the group is a great resource. And being in the Facebook group doesn't cost you a penny. I don't charge for anybody to be in the Facebook group because I want you to be able to just see what goes on. Um, and the only time that the, the fee comes into play is if you wanted to do any of the projects to access that on the website, you've got to become an official member. Um, and for those of you in the US, it's on sale technically year round because <laughs> the exchange rate is, I think it's, it's gone, it's gone down a little bit, but I think it's still 22 cents on the dollar. So hey Sharon, before we stop with color, mm -hmm. can you show us your colors, but switching the dark and the medium? Sure. We'll go back. Because you had a few examples and I found myself getting liking them for some reason. It's because I have good taste. <laughs> so that's the one yeah and so we will i'll just say no we'll go right back to our original and you want to switch out which two switch. colors flip the darks and the mediums so these two yes please okay uh actually this isn't my fabric no this isn't oh, your i was gonna say it's what you started with there's my fabric. That's my fabric. Okay, so you want to change those places. Mm -hmm. So we take that one and we put it there. And we take that one and we put it there. Oh, for Pete's sake, I do not know why it does that. I'll go back and do this one first. If you substitute a different color in there before you do switch them, because as soon as you change one color to oh, the other yeah, one, match. all of those right. colors. Yeah, yeah, and that's what's um, catching me in here is. So you just have to switch a slightly different one, not not yours, maybe. So yeah, exactly. This one. Okay, I I think I understand now what's going on here. So, if I switch it, if I take swap. This one, and just this is going to get really ugly here for a second, guys. Oh no, it's not going to do that either. Who is it that was saying that? Say that just again. go back. To, go back to your original um, colors. Yep. And then pick a red and put it in your dark. Ah. Now you can take your dark and put it where the medium is. Thank you very much. You dark where the red is, or the medium where the red is. Thank yes. you very much. I was like, what the heck? Yeah. Walking through it in my brain. So, so here's, me too. it's okay, but um, what what is changing here is we're losing how dynamic the diamond rings are. It's a softer look. It's softer, yeah. but we have real strength in that dark being in these little corner flex and in the log cabin. So it draws your eye in. So it's not as more, it's not as balanced as the first one. When we had the dark out here instead of the medium, it really provided a nice balance on those chains going around. Can so, you switch it back real quick just yeah, so we, we can see it? Mm -hmm. So you see how there's the dark 
Mm. Yes, it makes it and then the light blue, dark blue, light blue. So these change. The, the whole quilt has a, has a nice balance. And the other thing that I want to draw to your attention here is in this section is that dark. And that really brings mm -hmm. height to the peak of that mountain mm -hmm. section. And yeah. by switching it to a medium, we lost it. Yeah. See how it just kind of, mm -hmm. it just kind of receded a little bit there. Yes. <laughs> So, so I'm only joining here, Sharon. Hmm. Sorry, I missed. There was somebody that said something. I was going to ask: Is that one fabric directional, Sharon? Does that make a difference? None of the fabrics that I chose are really directional. I thought mm -hmm. that it looks like it because of the way the image is brought in. There's some lines in there. Uh, oh, oh hey, the one. This fabric the one is in directional. between the dark. It, that one. It's got a, a, a scratch going in one direction, but I don't think it's going to overall matter. Um, you know, like if I take uh, rotate my fabric in this section and in this section, see how yeah. it's going to be so not noticeable. Okay. You see how I rotated that? Mm -hmm. Can you give us a closer view? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Okay. So the scratch is going in this direction on this diamond and it's going in this direction here. Whereas if I rotate that yeah. and they're all going the same direction, now those two are going different directions and I'll just randomly do that with these ones as well. It's not overall that impactful. Right? However, some of us who are OCD <coughs> might have a problem with the mixed bag. If you are already like that, then you already know not to choose those kinds of fabrics for, for this. That That's already going to or be something you steer away right from. Or place them uh, appropriately. You know where these diamonds are going to be. And when I tell you what size to cut the rectangle for the diamond, if you want your print going the exact same way through all of them, that's the direction you're gonna cut your rectangles out of your fabric. Right, Sharon. Have you tried this in a in a Tim Holtz coloring? I, I had a Tim Holtz one um, that I didn't love, but it was the clock fabric. So I mean, I'd have to okay. I'd have to go and download. Um, oh, that's okay. I'm sorry. I'm late joining. So no, that's okay. That's okay. I don't know what I missed. No, that's all right. Um, I have one Tim Holtz fabric in here. Um, it's this one, but when I put it in, it it's a disaster. Yeah, it, but there's lots of other ones that, like I can totally see some of the newsprints being in the background. And, yep. Yeah. Yeah, and so like this one um, here, I don't think this is a Tim Holtz one, but, um, but we, it's similar. We, yeah, that similar kind of um, a look. Actually, there. And if I zoom in, if you missed this part of the, the presentation, we did. Oh, that's that. where I came in. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. that would going to give you that look. But in order to get all of those, I'd have to go in and download a bunch of his. Uh, that's okay. Yeah. Pictures. And what program are you using? EQ8. Okay. Sharon, what about greens? Yeah, <laughs> nobody has said anything about greens. I don't, and I didn't even show it in greens either. Right. I'd like to see it in a scrappy background. So that, yeah, so that will, if we, the best way to do a scrap, uh, give you a visual on a scrappy background, because that takes a while to color all the individual patches, okay. is to choose a fabric that has different things in it and then use that as a background across. So it gives you the effect of the scrappy background without, um, without having me have to go in and color every single patch something different. Does that make sense? So yeah. something like and could this. you do scrappy colors too? Totally. Totally. Just just have your value groupings, right? Just mm -hmm. have your lights, mediums, and darks. So lights meaning in your color grouping of lights, not mm -hmm. your light background. Yeah. Right? But yeah, totally you could do that. Um, so yeah, in order to me, for me to illustrate uh, or to, for you to have you visualize a scrappy background, I'd have to find a print. I'm just gonna go with the one that I did select because maybe that'll work. 
like this one that has different colors in it. And it kind of gives you an illusion of a scrappy background without me having to go in and color every single mm -hmm. thing, right? Because wow. that's, that's quite time consuming. It's not that you're not worth it. It's, <laughs> but it, it takes a long time to, to do. Um, where were we? I got lost. Green. 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 Greens, thank you. So I'm gonna change that back to something that would look good with the greens palette and we'll switch the dark green out to this one and maybe this one for a medium and well, I don't know but maybe Boy, I wish it was that fast going into a fabric store mm -hmm. we need a I print a busier print yeah it needs it needs a something in there doesn't it so let's go look at the thing because it remember how i was saying before about having one of them be a print what uh oh, different it makes great. it looks a very one noted and very kind of like flat and not dimensional right right but as soon as we add i'm just going to try to find one something with some movement in it like maybe that one maybe that try one the one with the purple in it that one's pretty that one's nice too that try that one that had the bit of purple in it because it'll give you a bit of diversity yeah so let's take a look at those so we've got um let's put this one in place of this medium and see so already it's more interesting yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, it just has a little bit that more one. life. Yeah, I'd switch this green out to this light green to something else. Ooh, camo mm -hmm. look. It's shimmering. Nope. Nope. To the flat colors. That looks nice. <laughs> That looks like Northern Reflections. Do you remember that store? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it looks yeah. like Northern Reflections to me. You're right. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> but there you go, greens. Uh, I can see this being scrappy and being stunning too. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I think you need a bit of that scrappiness to make it. Yeah, and, and like I said before, if that is, I'm going to share the fabric requirements with you so that you can um, drop our stash. You can do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it'd be fun to do like a very um, neutral background and do the piecing all in scraps. Yeah, that yeah, would be really nice. Yep. So a continuous background fabric, but scrappy the rest of it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. I did my um, my uh, uh, Monet's wedding ring like that. All my rings were all scrappy, but one color for the one fabric for the background. So it, it enables you to be to use up some of your stash and have a nice high variety in in the dynamic or the actual part of the design that you want to come forward. But then using that same fabric all as your one background just calms everything down. It, it lets you get away with a lot of chaos in color in the other parts. So, all right. So while uh, you guys can take a peek at this, but um, while I've got you guys, I am just gonna pop into um, my website. For those of you who don't know what the heck is this all about? Where do I find all this good stuff? And I'm gonna make sure you can see my screen. All right. So everybody can see this website right here. Okay, yep. you're seeing nods, yeah. Okay, so yep. um, at the top here, you can see this PQ Militia. If you're not a member and you try to click on one of these pages, it's gonna take you to a sign-in page and it's gonna look like this. And right now I'm signed in, so I'm just gonna log, I'm not gonna log out. I'm gonna stay where I am so I don't have to log back in. But you wouldn't see this, hello, Sh Sharon. That's what it's supposed to say. Um, you wouldn't see that. You would see say, see login, sign up. And if you try and log in and sign up and if you haven't paid for membership, I don't approve you. So you don't have access to anything in here unless you're a, um, a, an in good standing, um, fully paid member. 
once you become a member, I can approve that request. And then once you hover over top of this, then all of a sudden you have access to all of this good stuff. So Vintage Blues is the current project that we're talking about today. Uh, we have the size, we have dates, we have um, a timeline, uh, fabric requirements and selection chat to be announced. We're in it now. We have a coloring sheet here. So if I open this, can you see it on my screen? Yep. yep. Okay. So that's what the coloring sheet looks like. So you can go to town and play in there. Um, and right now you also have access to the PDF of the fabric requirements. That was what I was showing you on screen earlier. So you can look at the requirements and make some plans. And uh, I'll show you what else you can find. So currently we are doing this project here called 21. It's this beautiful quilt. Um, we did a recorded fabric selection uh, session, sort of like this one, but I was actually showing my fabrics. It wasn't digitally on screen. Um, I'm going to ask for your guys' feedback about this way of presenting a fabric selection chat and see if you like it better. Um, fabric requirements, step one, two, three. This is a 12-month one. This is the dates. Um, there's other projects in here. So when I do one that is actually a mystery, this one, I changed it up a little bit. You get to see the bones of the quilt, but you don't get to see what the quilt is actually gonna look like unless you click on sneak peek. And then that opens up a picture of what the quilt's actually, actually going to look like with color in it and where everything goes. Um, directionally challenged it was a previous one that we did. Um, the pattern's there for it. So I mean, anything that's in here you can go into and access the bonus projects. There's a bunch of free stuff in there. A few uh, patterns that you can download for free. That's been a really popular one. And that's the latest free one that's in there using a layer cake. Um, so if you try to get in here and you haven't paid for a membership, mm -hmm. you're not gonna be able to open any of this stuff. So just a, just a heads up that that's, and where you go to sign up is if you click on shop, and this quilting community community right here prairie quilt militia membership if you click on that you can add that to your cart and check out and um as soon as i get that as soon as you purchase that i get a notification that says um susie just bought a membership and then you get this download document in your purchase and and you get this receipt and there's a as a link inside that receipt there's a whole bunch of information in there uh, in that download tells you how to sign up tells you how to access things how the group works you also get a three hour piecing class called piece your way to freedom it starts with a, a trunk a full trunk show on my design philosophy of um and rest and how i choose fabrics for quilts um it comes with a, a video on uh, how to set up your machine for scan nice. stitching to make sure you're accurate and then it has three lessons with three patterns that you get and that's all included in the membership because i want you guys to be able to sew the quilts that you're signing up for so making sure that you guys have the success um, with that is getting that foundation in there so there's going to be um, some lessons that you can complete and then a bunch of patterns that you can take advantage of and for those of you who don't want to uh, participate in a, a full membership, but still want to um, buy the pattern, unfortunately, you do have to wait until our group is finished making the pattern together. But once they're done, I put them up for individual sale on my website. So that's a one day mystery we did. Um, this is a previous block of the month that we did a previous uh, program. So all of these patterns here that you see, they're all previous um, projects, well, most of them are previous projects that we did in the militia, and then I offer them up for individual sale once we're finished. Mm -hmm. You do have to wait until the group is done with them. Mm -hmm. So um, I see a question. Oh, Alita says she put in the chat, PQM is so awesome. So many great patterns. The color selection was delightful. So many choices. Like Thanks. Good to know. So um, I have a root canal in 45 minutes, so I'm going to panic for the next 45 minutes, probably. Um, so if you guys want to just kind of talk to you, me. And you're going to be fine. <laughs> you're going to be fine. Just think about the quilts that you're going to make and stitch and then, you know, you're going to love it. You're, I was lying in bed this morning thinking, don't Google it. Don't Google it. Don't Google it's it. It's not that bad. 
I googled, I googled it. Don't do it. Honestly, I've had half my Jen, mouth. I hate the dentist. I hate the dentist and uh, I avoid it at all costs. But when I had to have mine, I was terrified like you. And I walked out of there going, that was it. <laughs> I know it's uh, never as bad as we anticipate. So uh, unless there's any other questions, I'm going to stop recording. Does anybody else want to have anything that we can talk about regarding? Okay. So I'm just going to stop recording here.